As SpaceX has increased the number of Falcon 9 and heavy missions significantly, we've seen more and more expendable launches. During an expendable launch, instead of the booster heading back to land or a drone ship at sea, it often has reusable hardware removed before launch and is discarded after stage separation. Even though reusability has saved the company a ton of money and contributed to the current record-setting launch cadence, it's not perfect for every mission. When SpaceX reuses a Falcon 9 booster, for example, they use a combination of grid fins, propulsive landing burns, and four landing legs to orient, slow, and successfully land the stage. This process can reduce the payload performance with added weight from everything just listed, along with the fact that a decent amount of propellant needs to be saved for landing. Some missions, due to the size or weight of their payload, or even the destination, require more from the launch vehicle. However, this increased performance often comes with a higher price tag with a booster being lost. Here I'll go more in depth into SpaceX's expendable boosters, the performance boost provided, why some launches require this approach, and more. Reusability is an integral part of the Falcon program. SpaceX pioneered reusability with the first reflight of an orbital-class rocket in 2017. By late 2021, SpaceX had reflown rockets more than 65 times, with a 100% success rate. Since 2018, SpaceX had more missions launching with a flight-proven rocket than a first-flight rocket. SpaceX also started reflying fairings in late 2019, and at the end of 2020 had reflown more than 40 fairing halves with a 100% success rate. The company was quoted saying, By reflying boosters and fairings, SpaceX increases reliability and improves its designs and procedures by servicing and inspecting hardware as well as incorporating lessons that can only be learned from flight. Most recently, these numbers have only gone up almost exponentially. Just a few months ago, SpaceX released a video of the Falcon launch cadence over the past few years. It helps put in perspective the number of launches that are happening right now, mainly thanks to reusability. It's not just about saving money but simply refurbishing a booster rather than creating a new one a process that SpaceX has only gotten faster at. Despite all these great examples of booster reusability, some still get expended. This year alone, a few Falcon 9 boosters were not reused. However, for the Falcon Heavy, this method is far more popular. In the three launches completed between early 2023 and now, every single launch expended at least a single booster. The first launch in January expended the center core, the next launch in April expended all three boosters, and the most recent launch last month was only the center core. In all those examples, this was planned and they launched the boosters without any grid fins or landing gear. The Falcon 9 payload to LEO in a reusable format is around 17,400 kg, while when expendable, it rises to 22,800 kg. The partially reusable Falcon Heavy falls into the heavy lift range of launch systems, capable of lifting 20,000 to 50,000 kg into low Earth orbit. A fully expendable Falcon Heavy is in the super heavy lift category, with a maximum payload of 64,000 kg to LEO. The significant difference is part of the reason why Falcon Heavy launches are more likely to include at least a single expendable booster. When referring to payload capacity, Musk was quoted saying, The max performance numbers are for expendable launchers. Subtract 30 to 40% for a reusable booster payload. In order to make the Falcon 9 reusable and return to the launch site, extra propellant and landing gear must be carried on the first stage, requiring around a 30% reduction of the maximum payload to orbit in comparison with the expendable Falcon 9. Reflight of a previously used stage on a subsequent flight is dependent on the condition of the landed stage, and is a technique that has seen little use outside of the Space Shuttle's reusable solid rocket boosters. In general, customers purchasing flights on Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy have specific performance and destination needs. With a heavy lift rocket in particular, the difference between a reusable and expendable configuration could determine whether or not the payload can reach its designated orbit or even how long it stays there. All the way back in 2015, Musk projected that the reflight step of the program would be straightforward because of the multiple full duration firings of the engines that had been done on the ground and the multiple engine restarts that had been demonstrated by that time. Later that year, industry analysts continued to forecast problems that could prevent economic reuse because costs to refurbish and relaunch the stage were not yet demonstrated, and the economic case for reuse would be highly dependent on launching frequently. Eventually, however, SpaceX was successful and began reusing boosters again and again. In order to achieve the full economic benefit of the reusable technology, it's necessary that the reuse be both rapid and complete. Without the long and costly refurbishment period or partially reusable design that plagued earlier attempts of reusable launch vehicles. According to Musk, almost every piece of the Falcon should be reused over 100 times. Heat shields and a few other items should be reused over 10 times before replacement. Over time, this process has proved to be extremely reliable. Last month, Falcon 9 achieved 244 out of 246 full mission successes, or 99.2%. In the past, SpaceX CRS-1 succeeded in its primary mission but left a secondary payload in the wrong orbit, while SpaceX CRS-7 was destroyed in flight. In addition, one payload disintegrated on the launch pad during fueling for an engine test. 
In 2016, Musk described the version Block 5 Falcon 9 is coming with a lot of minor refinements that collectively are important, but upgraded thrust and improved landing legs are the most significant. He later added that Block 5 significantly improves performance and ease of reusability. The Block 5 second stage included upgrades to enable it to linger in orbit and reignite its engines three or more times. By now, Block 5 has a success rate of 100%, 190 out of 190. For comparison, the industry benchmark Soyuz series has performed 1,880 launches with a success rate of 95.1%. The Russian Proton series has performed 425 launches with a success rate of 88.7%. The European Ariane 5 has performed 110 launches with a success rate of 95.5%, and Chinese Long March 3B has performed 85 launches with a success rate of 95.3%. As partially mentioned prior, although the reusable launch system technology was developed and initially used for the first stage of the Falcon family of rockets, it's particularly well suited for the Falcon Heavy, where the two outer cores separate from the rocket earlier in the flight, and are therefore moving slowly at stage separation. For example, on Falcon 9 Flight 20, the speed at separation was close to 6,000 km an hour, and this allowed a return to near the launch site. On Flight 22, going to a more energetic GTO orbit, the higher velocity at separation was between 8,000 and 9,000 km an hour. At these faster speeds, it's not possible to return the booster to near the launch site for landing. If a landing is attempted, it needs to be hundreds of kilometers downrange on an autonomous drone ship. SpaceX offers three options, depending on launch requirements, landing on land, landing at sea, or expending the first stage, in order of increased performance and cost. Practically any Falcon flights launched into geostationary orbit or exceeding escape velocity require landing at sea, or expending the first stage. Less demanding launches from Florida can return to landing zones 1 and 2 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, while less demanding launches from California can return to landing zone 4. To put it in perspective, around three quarters of recovered Falcon boosters land at sea as of 2022. They use an autonomous spaceport drone ship, an ocean-going vessel derived from a deck barge, outfitted with station-keeping engines and a large landing platform. They are capable of precision positioning, originally slated to be within 3 meters or 9.8 feet even under storm conditions, using GPS position information and four diesel-powered azimuth thrusters. In addition to the autonomous operating mode, the ships may also be telerobotically controlled. The azimuth thrusters are hydraulic propulsion outdrive units with modular diesel hydraulic drive power units manufactured by Thrustmaster, a marine equipment manufacturer in Texas. The returning first stage must not only land within the confines of the deck surface, but must also deal with the ocean swells and GPS airs. The ships use a variety of sensor and measurement technology to gather data on the booster return and landing attempts. Right now, SpaceX has three operational drone ships, Just Read the Instructions, A Short Follow Gravitas, and of course I Still Love You, all of which operate in specific areas and move around when needed. A key part in the company's reusability program and future. SpaceX has made some very impressive progress over time related to booster recovery. Even with this being the case, we are seeing more and more expendable booster launches as Falcon Heavy takes to the skies more often. We will have to wait and see how it progresses and the impact it has on the space industry. Thank you very much for watching.